Hi, I'm Angelina Wang, and today I'm going to talk about work with Olga Rusakovsky called Overwriting Pretrained Bias with Fine-Tuning Data. In this work, we look at how given the practical constraints of both model and data set size, the current common paradigm is often transfer learning. What this normally looks like is downloading some sort of pre-trained model and fine-tuning it on a smaller application-specific data set. The main question that we study in our work is will the social biases in the pre-trained models propagate into fine-tuned ones? This might bring us concern if we're trying to use pre-trained models and we are worried about whether the kinds of biases will propagate into the fine-tuned ones that we're planning to use. The word bias in general is a vague and often underspecified term. So in our work, we consider two concrete different forms of bias that are the most common in computer vision. The first is bias as spurious correlations. So for example, if in a data set dogs are frequently shown on grass, the model might spuriously correlate these and have trouble recognizing dogs in the sand. The other type of bias we look at is biases under representation. So an example is for an object detector, if when trained on soap, it has generally only seen the appearance of pump soap, it might not be able to recognize bar soap, which is more common in other kinds of regions that are less represented in the training data set. The method that we use in our work is considering a number of pre-trained models. These include existing popular ones like MoCo or SimClear, but also pre-training our own models so that we're able to control and create different kinds of bias. For this, we use data sets like Fairface, ImageNet, and the more geodiverse geode. We then use our two different kinds of bias of spurious correlation and underrepresentation. And depending on the type of bias, fine tune it on different kinds of data. For spurious correlation, we consider in Celeb A how gender is correlated with different kinds of facial attributes. And for Coco, we consider how gender is correlated with different kinds of objects. For unbiased as our underrepresentation, in Celeb A, we can consider how two different attributes, for example, eyeglasses and earrings, might be two different appearances of the same label, for example, facial accessory. We also look at the more geodiverse Dollar Street data set compared to Coco. When we're looking at bias as spurious correlation, the way we measure this is the false positive rate difference of the prediction between different kinds of groups, for example, gender. However, for biases under representation, the measure we use is the AUC difference between two different pre-trained models. What this captures is whether a pre-trained model that saw more of the underrepresented appearance at pre-training time will have an advantage over a pre-trained model that did not. Overall, in our work, we find that models fine-tuned on top of pre-trained models can inherit their biases. However, we also find that this bias can be relatively easily corrected for by curating the distribution of the fine-tuning data set with a negligible impact to performance. For example, if we take a pre-trained MoCo model and fine-tune it on classifying whether an image in the Celebe data set has eye bags or not, we can get a high performance, but also a high bias, measured as the false positive rate difference between people of different genders. However, if we take the fine-tuning data set of around 1,000 images and manipulate the strength of the correlation between eye bags and gender from 20% to 30%, we can actually retain the same high performance on the same test set as before, but cut the amount of bias by almost half. What this tells us is if we consider where along the pre-training and fine-tuning data to intervene, we might consider the best places on the fine-tuning data set and doing so can actually allow us to even overcome different kinds of pre-trained bias. Overall, our takeaway is that very careful creation of the fine-tuning data set is important for reducing biases on a downstream task, even to the point where doing so can compensate for the biases in a pre-trained model. Thank you for listening and please check out our work.